So this now is a cross-section of a cilium or a flagellum. It can be either one because, in fact, in eukaryotes, cilia and flagella show the same cross-sectional structure of microtubules. Here is our cross-section of a single microtubule, remember, with its 13 tubulin monomers as an inset showing that in the cross-section of a cilium or flagellum, there are many microtubules. There are doublet microtubules, and if you count them, there are nine of them in the circumference of this cilium or flagellum. There are two single microtubules in the middle, and then there's all this fuzzy stuff. These fuzzy things have different structures, and I can illustrate them better uh, looking at the cartoon. The doublet microtubules are connected to one another by these blue structures called nexin. The doublets also have motor proteins, in fact, two dynein molecules on each of the doublets. We talk about an outer and an inner dynein arm. These are the motor proteins that can extend from one doublet to the next, allowing one doublet to move along the other. And again, we're going to see that in more detail in the context of an experiment that led us to a sliding microtubule model for the bending of a cilium or a flagellum. So it's the dynein arms outer and inner that are going to allow cilia or flagella to bend. There are other structures here. Each doublet is at the end of a radial spoke that is projecting from the center of the cilium or the flagellum. Surrounding the central pair of microtubules or single microtubules is a gray substance which is sometimes called the central or inner sheath. And this entire structure, as you can see, is also surrounded by the plasma membrane. So a cilium or a flagellum is an extension of the cell complete with a membrane surrounding this complex looking structure, uh, which by the way is called 9 plus 2, meaning 9 double microtubules plus 2 single ones. The 9 plus 2 microtubule array characteristic of eukaryotic cilia and flagella. Well, you can dissect a cilium or a flagellum and analyze the structures inside. So here we have a sperm with various parts shown, but we're going to concentrate on the flagellum, which you can actually pop off the sperm uh, using a high-speed blender. Now what you have is a membrane-bound 9 plus 2 array of microtubules, and this isolated flagellum will actually beat, just like a real flagellum, if you add ATP. It is a kind of model for the intact sperm in terms of the movement of the sperm tail, right? Now, if you treat with some detergents that will disrupt the phospholipids of the membrane, you can actually strip the membrane off, then centrifuge. You can collect the structures that you have left behind, the axonine, which is going to move to the pellet, and then you can throw away the supernatant, which has all the phospholipids and other membrane components. And then you can resuspend this structure called the axonine and look at it in the electron microscope. The axonine is the inner microtubular component of a flagellum or a cilium. Now if you add ATP, it is hydrolyzed, and the free energy does in fact enable this axonine to beat. Now without the membrane, that beat is a little jerky and not quite as smooth as it would be in flagellum itself, but it definitely is whipping around.